Yeah. All right, it's connecting. Here we go. Setting up your meeting. Redirecting. Going live. Go on. There we go. We are live, everybody. Welcome to another Hudson Valley Squares episode. We are now live Woo! here on Monday night, right? Monday night must see TV at the Hollywood Squares. No, the Hudson Valley Squares. Sorry. <laughs> uh, got, uh, let's see. We got everybody minus Nick Franco tonight. So Nick is, uh, we're going to miss Nick for a couple of weeks, but we've got his picks for tonight's topic. So tonight's topic is our favorite albums from 1982. Pretty damn good year. All right. We've got Ryan. We've got Chris. We've got Steve. We've got Butch. We've got Lynn and we've got Sydney. I am, of course, Pete. So hi, everybody. So again, I asked everybody Hello. to pull together like their three favorite album releases from 1982. We realized there's some really notable ones from 82. So I think everybody has also grabbed some other honorable mentions just in case so we don't all you know pick the same albums, right? But uh, I'm going to have Mr. Allo kick us off tonight. We're going to go Chris. We're going to go Ryan, Steve, Butch, Lynn, and Sydney, then back to myself. So, uh, Mr. Allo, what do you got for us, your first pick? Okay, cool. Uh, 1982 really was a killer year for, uh, for music. Uh, this one was kind of, kind of an easy choice for me because um, I was thinking, um, all right, well, uh, what's my most purchased album from, uh, from 1982? And um, if I'm not mistaken, I have seven copies of this album. Oh. Um, it, nice. uh, I looked for two days uh, at my house, uh, but I could only find five of them. But I know I have at least one more, I think, too. Uh, but it's a great record. I still listen to this all the time. I love this band. Uh, without a doubt, they're one of the most influential uh, metal bands of all time. Part of the new wave of British heavy metal, but a huge influence on uh, thrash metal, death metal, black metal. Uh, the three of the big four, Metallica. Uh, Megadeth and Slayer uh, were all huge fans of this band. I, I'm not quite sure what's wrong with Anthrax uh, that they weren't uh, fans of this band. Uh, but of course, I'm talking about 1982's uh, Black Metal from Venom. Yes. This is the uh, this is the brand new uh, colored vinyl version that I got in the 40 years of Sodom uh, box set. Uh, I don't even like touching it because I don't want to get it dirty. Uh, this is my original version from the uh, that I bought in 1985 from the Here Lies Venom box set. Um, this is the original uh, CD from I don't even know 90 something. Uh, then I got the uh, the double disc CD in the slipcase with all the bonus tracks. And uh, then I have the fold out digipack which has the uh, live DVD from the Hammersmith Odeon. And of course, just recently, I, I couldn't have all that without a stop at Rock Fantasy to get the Ooh. Venom black metal action figure available at Rock Fantasy. Um, but, I, you know, if you haven't heard this record, you're, you're totally missing out. Uh, I mean, it's, um, it's amazing. It, it's, it's unbelievable. It got, I think in Kerrang! Oh gave it a four and a half. Uh, out, of, out of five stars, and um, I just dig it, man. It's it's heavy, it's it's sloppy as hell, uh, yeah. but it's great. I, I mean, the song's black metal, buried alive, teacher's pet. Um, I mean, it was dirty, uh, drugs, Satanism. It, it's awesome, and uh, it was a hugely influential record. And uh, I'll just keep buying it, man. I don't care. Do you want to buy I have another. I got another one in. <laughs> I got another combat pressing, and uh, I'm pretty sure I got a picture disc. But Pete, I looked. I was in that attic, freezing my ass off. Now, if I you could just it. incorporate the Pardo cataloging system, you know you would find everything you're looking for that you own, right? I, I wish I had your guys. I'm working on them. I wish I had your organizational skills, Pete, because it's it's a mess. I was tripping over boxes, and I was actually nauseous just seeing all the stuff that I have that I'm like I can't even remember buying that. <laughs> but um, but I love this record and uh, out, out of these picks, yeah, uh, Venom, Venom's Black Metal. Uh, that's my uh, one of my one of my favorites. So I saw Butch had a question. He raised his hand like five oh, seconds. What do you got? Butch? I, I raised it and lowered it because he kind of answered the question. I figured everyone else, all the listeners or viewers out there, are probably wondering the same thing. 
I was going to ask you, why do you have seven copies of it? But then you kind of explained. Yeah. Why, yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, you guys know how it is. It, you know, first it's, first it's the bonus tracks and then the remastered and then the different bonus tracks and then a DVD and the new version. I was like, oh, the picture disc or, or colored vinyl with the book and everything else. And, you know, it's, 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 it's partially a disease. Um, yeah. You're a it's a good disease, so, Dad. You've got a question. What do you got, Steve? My two, yeah, cents, on so. my two cents on that album. You didn't mention track number nine, Countess Bathory. Oh, that song is so yeah. good. Yeah. Heaven's um, on fire. And, and Buried Alive. Yeah, I, mean, I can remember like a couple of local bands covering that, and I got that old part when they lower me down into that hole in the ground. Such a great album. I mean, the whole the whole record is 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 is, oh, is yeah, so yeah. great. I mean, and you know, and if you're not a black metal fan, I would not be scared off by it because you know, to me, uh, you know, uh, Venom has more in common with Motorhead than uh, than in Mayhem. Uh, oh, yeah. so. I mean, it's heavy, but it's not like I don't know. It's not right. like holy shit. I can't like you know if I. Yeah this i can't listen to this you know like it's, no it's pretty listenable for those who maybe aren't too into to like black metal and stuff yeah, it's it's really black metal, metal. <laughs> his vocals are so good on that album he just has so yeah. much personality and charisma i mean they were so they were so over the top i mean oh. you know taking little bits of you know all, all you know kiss and priest and sabbath and just you know on, on times a hundred yep exactly good choice Excellent. All right, Ryan. Uh, and Ryan is actually going to give his first pick as well as Nick, who's not with us today, uh, his pick as well. So, uh, yeah, Nick, Nick sent me his list, and uh, I had my list all typed up. I was ready to go, and he's like, ah, I have to work. I can't be on. So he sent me his list, and his list was the exact same fucking list as mine, you know, because he has great taste. Well, that's crazy. Enough. So uh, I, I, I moved mine. I, I said, you know what? Leave yours alone. So I moved mine around a little bit. But our number five choice for both of us is the same. Makes it nice and easy. So I'll just kill two birds with one stone here. And uh, other bands play, but fucking Man of War Kill. First Man of War Kill. Man of War Kill. Uh, so this, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listening know this album, but uh, this was great because the first album was way more like hard rock, rock and roll oriented than some of the later stuff. But the last two tracks, uh, Dark Avenger and Battle Him, are like balls out epic fist pounding, you know, Conan the Barbarian, like epic fucking metal. So they really, you know, were on both sides of the uh, the, the equation with this first one. But this is just, you know, I, I mean, if I, if I could pick one Man of War song, if no one's ever heard of them, because obviously sometimes they get a bad rap, because they are a little silly. Well, they got a little sillier later on. There's All really right, nothing silly stuff. about the early stuff. This is just like straight up good heavy metal. But uh, yeah. the title track, Battle Him, the last song on this album, is absolutely fucking phenomenal. It's just everything you want to hear in good, like, epic heavy metal, you know, swords and sorcery, like that kind of stuff. So, yeah, for Nick and myself, number five, going with other bands play Man of War Kill. That's a know. classic. Yeah, it's, I listen to it all the time. Wait a minute. We're, we're doing five picks or three? Yeah, I, was say, I, I thought we were only doing three. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm over five. Okay. Too, I told everybody come with three, come with five, just in case uh, you know. Oh, okay. what's, your number, what's your number four, Scal? Might as well knock a couple off while you're up. <laughs> All right, well, I'll do uh, so. Nick's number four. I'll knock his off real quick. Then a uh, great little band from Canada. Everybody knows and loves. If you got taste, that's Rush Woo-hoo. Signals. And yeah. his number three, of course. You know, once you get an album that anybody with any taste knows and loves, screaming for fucking vengeance. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go get back. To you and, uh, I'll just burn through them quick. Awesome. Good. All right, Steve, what do you got? Well, we're all gonna knock ones that are somebody else's have. I'm gonna have a tie for number three tonight because the one that's an EP, and this is gonna this is gonna steal some of Ryan's glory. I think uh, Merciful Fates nuns have no fun. Uh, I mean, of course, it was a star. <laughs> Of a, another thing, like how Venom had started black metal, you've got Merciful Fate in that same kind of genre, starting what they were doing. Of course, the first track, the first track on the second track with A Corpse Without Soul, Doom by the Living Dead, such a great album. And I'm going to tie that with number three with Rush Signals, uh, way different side of the music. But I was thinking of stuff I listen more. I'm leaving Iron Maiden. 
number of the beasts and scream for engines out of the equation. They'd probably be my one and two, but I figured everybody would pick them. So the rush signals, of course, subdivisions, analog kid, losing it. And I love Countdown about the launch, about the NASA launch. I thought that was such a great song. So those are my picks. Cool. Good choices. Butch, what do you got? Well, this is, it was very painful to do five because 1982 is, is a tremendous year. So if you guys are trying to do three, I have five. And now I have six because I didn't want to dance on someone else's <laughs> parade. So I'm going to do like Mr. Scow and, and run through a couple quick ones to get to three and then play fair from there. So um, I had originally as my five was Sydney's got behind her. So I'll just kind of throw it out of the way. Scorpion's blackout, fucking perfect. Uh. Um, and then... Okay. My number six that was going to be five, and I kept going back and forth between this and Blackout, and I didn't know, but now that I'm throwing Blackout out because of Sydney, even though I got it in there, um, is uh, Gary Moore's Corridors of Power. Uh, How did I forget that one? Oh, God. Oh, oh man. I well, didn't think much was. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad it's represented. Work. That's all. It's Gary, this is, this is where I came in on him. Uh, <laughs> The, you know, anyone that's into his blue stuff, God bless you. I, I like it too, but it's not the same as Gary having the fire when he was doing the hard rock metal stuff. So uh, just, yeah. Um, so uh, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to I'll go with those two as my four and five. And then, uh, no, no, that's actually five and six. I'm going <laughs> to. This is painful. I don't like Keep doing this. Keep them coming. Keep it them hurts. Rolling. Keep them rolling. All right. I can't. I, uh, oh, I'm my break, God. I'm, I'm breaking the rules. I don't care. So yeah. except Restless and Wild, um, this could. This is a perfect record, too. And I have the German cover, which is awesome. Um, I don't know. What is that? Number nine? I don't, I don't even know. So what's your favorite song off that album, bro? Um, Restless, Restless and Wild? Wild? Yeah. Uh, Boy, there's some good ones, aren't there? Fast the Shark the is, right is almost too easy to say. Um, Princess of the Dawn. Oh. I, I, I've always loved Flash yeah. Rocket Man. And um, and then honestly, as I've gotten older, Don't Go Stealing Your Heart Away has become a big one for me, too. I, I love that one, too. Even uh, even ahead of a pack, it's so good. Oh, it's everything. It's just it's <laughs> awesome. Mean, so catching up to you guys, so I'm sorry. Um, so my, my third pick... <laughs> That wasn't three. You're pulling the Steve Kittler tonight, Bush. <laughs> yeah. I started at six. Oh, yeah. Sydney, Why are you just started, 17 off the bat? Sydney, I started at six because you had you had blackout, and I didn't want to use that. We all had blackout. You did. Personally, I'm like, I'm like, this is six and five. Wait, this is four and five. Wait, this is five and six. Okay, now we're on three. Exactly. I'm getting them in there, but I'm doing it quick. So. Shut up, oh, Ryan. There's another one. <laughs> oh, I have that on my honorable mention. My, num my number three is is Michael Shanker's Assault Attack. I've talked yeah. about this album before, and actually, this is this is a perfect record. Uh, I remember being going to Record World in Fishkill, New York, when I was a kid in, in '82, and seeing this. Yeah. And I had never heard anything from it before, but the album cover, the volcano with him holding the guitar, always caught my attention. And yes, it's, I got Grand Bonnet to sign it a couple of years ago, which is cool. Nice. Um, nice. I always saw this album cover. I'm like, and I, I knew who Shanker was. I'm like, I got to get that. I got to get that. And I finally had to order it as a Japanese import. And uh, oh, God. What was, what's a couple of your favorite tracks off of that book? Oh, God. Assault Attack. Um, the, the title track, Desert Song, is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. And, and honestly, I think either my favorite or, or my second favorite guitar solo of all time for Michael Schenker is in the song Samurai. Samurai is great. Yeah. Oh, oh so shit. great, isn't it? God damn it. It's been so long since I've listened to that album. We don't have to listen to it when we get done tonight, I think. Yeah, that, that's McKenna, a once a month listen for me. Easy. Oh my God. Tim McKenna and, and Rest in Peace and Chris Glenn made a great rhythm section, man. That record is so awesome. It's produced fantastically. So here's a here's a comment for Butch. Butch Gretzky Jones sneaks another one in the back door. <laughs> and I will say I'm getting a lot of shit from people for forgetting about Corridors of Power by Gary Moore. I, I Gary Moore, who's that? Pete, you ever hear of him? 
1982 <laughs> is hard, man. This I don't, but I don't know how I overlooked that's that. That's what I mean, you know. I that's know. why I, I couldn't do it either, three. Pete. Three? That's a great album. That is a really good album. I didn't think of it until Butch said it. I'm like, well, I cheated a little. I went up to Wikipedia and looked at 82 album releases. So <laughs> that's how I, I, I know a couple. I knew well, Butch is going to have that. Pete's going to have that one. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. All right, Lynn. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, I, not to be a dick, but everybody, I'm going to get to three because I had five. So I'm going to do my four and five, which again, I'm sure everybody else is going to have the same records. Um, but growing up and, and not even, not even just growing up, but in general, my ex-husband played in an Aussie band and I heard this record thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And it's Aussie speak of the devil. Symptoms of the Universe is one of my favorite songs ever. Thank you. And uh, I just, I go crazy the second that fucking album starts, you know? Again, right? I know Butch's buddy, Brad Gillis, before he goes to Night Ranger and Rudy Sarzo before he goes to Quiet Riot. But it is, I heard that record a million times. So that's definitely my number five record, um, Speak of the Devil. And my number four, um, again, I used to sit in my bedroom and I used to listen to this album over and over and over again. And it's Van Halen Diver Down. Okay. Um, I listened to it over and like profusely. And the funny thing is, is I used to dance around like a big dork to Big Bad Will is Sweet. Will you know? Like, and I kind of still do. But the funny thing is, is that my dad and my mom, God rest their soul, every time the end of the record would come and Happy Trails, they would stick their heads in the bedroom door and they would sing it with me. So I, I, you know, I kind of get the feels when I hear that now because it it makes me think of them. So those are my four and five, which... Again, they're warm and fuzzy, makes me feel good, you know? So it's Speak of the Devil and Diver Down. But um, my number three, believe it or not, is uh, Roxy Music, Avalon. And I really, I, I love Brian Ferry on vocals. I love his voice. Um, I, I love that song. I love the whole record. Um, I listened to it a lot um, back in the day. And I probably haven't heard it, in, you know, this year. I probably haven't played it at all, but... Um, it's funny because a Haitian band was recording the same time Roxy Music was recording and he heard this woman singing. Her name is, I can't even pronounce it, Yannick Etienne. Um, she sang all the higher stuff on that record. Her boyfriend had to come in and translate, which I thought was actually really cool. So my number three pick will be Roxy Music Avalon. Great choice. That's a really fun album to listen to. I love it. I love yeah. it. And I it's just a good song. coming. Yeah, I didn't either. That's no. Well, thank you. I'm full of surprises. Yeah, I know. I had new kids on a block a couple weeks ago. Stop it. I have the logos on my honorable mention, too. <laughs> All right, Sydney, what do you got? All right, so should I do my 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 f- four and five then? I yes. guess everybody oh, else. Yes, you should. So yes, I'll you do should. my four and five. So, um, I mean, I knew everybody was going to pick this one, so it was at the bottom of my list and my honorable mentions. Um, I mean... You can't go wrong with it. It should be like number one on everybody. So it's pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's perfection. The same thing with that. We put yeah, it down. So I, I'm not going to go into into depth because I know probably Ryan will in a little bit as, <laughs> as to fix. But this was number five for me. I mean, there's just really no explanation of this one. Um, my fourth is going to be the first Vandenberg album. Wow, um, that's great. One. Love that. I love yeah. this album. Um, I mean, this was, I feel like this often, this album often kind of goes overlooked in a weird way when it comes to kind of just metal fans or rock fans who might not be, you know, too deep into this great. world. Um, but I mean, Burning Heart on this album is so great. Yeah. Um, you know, Back on My Feet, just, it's a really great album. Lost in the City. Yep. It's it's just front, front and back. I, I just, I love this album and it didn't make my top three, but I wanted to have it in the episode tonight so on the show um, nice. so love adrian vandenberg too i know uh he most recently did another one and you know had rudy sarzo and everything on it um i think back last year in 2020 um so yeah no i love this first album um lynn mentioned my number three pick i'm doing diver down Woo-hoo! Um, i know that sometimes this album gets shit from van halen fans i know that it is a little bit chock full of covers but to be honest a lot of the covers on this album I like better than the original songs themselves in my yeah. opinion. Um, like I would listen to this, their version of Pretty Woman, um, honestly, better than Royal, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, little Guitars on this album is so freaking good. Hang Em High, Cathedral. It's just, love it. I love this album. It, and I don't even, I'll die on this hill. I don't really care if, you know, a lot of people give this album shit. It's great. I, 
album. I'm it's, dying with you, Sid. It's it's Uh-oh. really great. Um, <laughs> so I mean, even like Where Have All the Good Times Gone, I would listen to the this version then. Right. The original. Like it's just it's Van it's Van Halen eyes. So who who wouldn't you know? Exactly. Um. So that's gonna be my number three. Diver down. I love that's our anthem now. Where have all the good times gone? Yeah. Actually. Uh, don't, yeah. Let any, don't let anyone. Twenty nineteen. Don't let anyone tear that album down. I, that was the no. first year that I saw Van Halen. I saw them on that tour in 82. November 13th, 1982, Nassau Coliseum. Wow. Yeah, people uh, give nice. that album shit. I, I like, well, I see, you know, I don't really get in a conversation, but, you know, I follow a lot of like Van Halen stuff on Twitter and people like really don't like it. And I mean, there's, it's, it, it's got covers, but it's also got some really great songs. Yeah. And I, People yeah. are like, maybe the song was left over from other writing sessions. And it's like, well, who gives a shit if it was left over from other writing sessions? They still freaking yeah. wrote it. So it's on the album. So why does it matter? You know, it's still a great song. Exactly. Um, so, you know, I, I love that album. And yeah, I will die on that hill. So that's my number three. It's kind of nice. Cool. Great album. Yes, uh, people are noticing that Butch is bourboning once again. It wouldn't be a Monday night without I forgot that. to say bourboning. Yep. Shirts are coming. <laughs> T-shirts are coming. <laughs> All right, in the spirit of what everybody's doing, I'll uh, quickly, uh, you know, already a couple of my other picks have been mentioned, like Assault Attack and uh, Restless and Wild and Signals and Screaming for Vengeance. And he, He's uh, got the, 15 uh, albums. Don't let anyone, don't, don't believe anything he says. He's got 25 records right there off to the side that he's going through right now. <laughs> <laughs> so my number four and five, I'm going to go with Broadsword and the Beast by Jethro Tull and a uh, little Juggernaut wow. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. I saw that on the list. Yes, I love that. Juggernaut. Okay, my awesome. number three, and this could be my number one. Uh, I, I love this album so much. I know there's some fans of the band that don't like this record, but I don't really care. I love it. Uh, Abominog by your right. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Oh, wow. Saw them on that tour. <laughs> the, demon, the demon monkey. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever the hell it is. I just, I love the big fat production of this album, and it, this just sounds like. You know, Uriah Heap moving into the 80s, and uh, there's a lot of great anthems on here. It's pretty heavy. There's some catchy stuff on here. The guitars of Mick Box are super crunchy. <laughs> Peter Golby's vocals are really cool. He kind of sounds a little like, uh, maybe a little like a combination of Glenn Hughes and Lou Graham from Foreigner. Uh, but I love the tunes. You know, a couple songs were written by outside writers. I get all that. But I still think it's a kick-ass, really fun, easy to listen to uh, album from the early 80s from Heap. And I don't know. A lot of people hate that album cover. I think it's awesome. It's awesome. It. You know what though? They've got Ozzy's rhythm section playing from playing with Randy. You got Bob Daisley and Karis Lake on that. Yeah, come on. That's right. And I saw them on that tour. They opened for Bluish the Cult on that tour. I was at I that. Bought, I, I, I bought that album at Record World. I think. Right now. Right now. Uh, Pete, uh, Pete, I got a question for you. What were some of your favorite tracks on the Juggernaut album? Uh, from the Juggernaut album, well, let's see. Stories of a Hero for for one, I love. It's got one of my favorite Frank Marino guitar solos all the, of all time. Midnight Highway is a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, the title track is great, and you know, of course, oh, yeah. he doesn't love Strange Dreams, right? Oh yeah, it's Such funny because Strange Dreams is like the biggest hit he ever had, and it's like the only song in his discography that doesn't have a guitar solo. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah what a great, what a great uh, trivia point. that is, right? <laughs> All right, back to Mr. Allo. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, this is uh, one of my all-time favorite records. I know I mentioned this band once uh, a while ago. Uh, I saw Wendy O. Williams on uh, oh, Plasmatics, rather, right. on SCTV. Definitely gave me a few donor. <laughs> and, uh, you know, later on, I got into the band. Uh, at first, I was terrified, but kind of weirdly turned on at the same time. But their, uh, their all-time best recording, which they recorded twice, is uh, the 1982 record uh, coup d'etat? It definitely uh, they they veered more in a more me- way more metallic direction. They they even covered uh, no class from Motorhead, uh, and it's just a really solid, uh, catchy but heavy album. I mean, the Damned is just one of the fucking greatest oh. songs of all time. Uh, my biggest concert regret is is never actually uh, seeing them in concert. Uh, so that one really kind of sucks for me. That would certainly be a time machine thing. And I'm not the biggest Kiss fan, uh, but my certainly my favorite Kiss record is Creatures of the Night. And man, oh, I'm my other one now. Oh, so, well, hey, everybody else is mentioning ten fucking albums. <laughs> Shit, I ain't got none left. 
I got only one. six. It was only six. Oh, goodness, I would have loved to see the plasmatics open for Kiss on the Creatures tour. Uh, but man, this is a fucking great record. And uh, this came out in 2000 something. This is Coup de Gras, which is the original recording that they did with uh, Dan Hartman from uh, Edgar Winter Group. But uh, killer record. And uh, Wait a that's, minute. Uh, that's my pick. Wait, Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Back up. Show okay. me that, show me that record again. The second one. The second one. Yes, this is this is the that's the original. This is Coup de Gras, which is the demo album they did with Dan Hartman. Dan which Hartman? never got released. Are you kidding yeah. me? Dan Hartman nope. produced it? Yep. Wow. Yeah, they, they, they recorded the whole album. They got signed to Capitol. They did the whole record. Capitol gave them a bunch of shit. They were like, it's too raw, it's too rough. So they redid the whole record and that came out as coup de gras and everybody always said you know that was connected to the band that the first version was was uh, the better one because it was raw and so finally this came out in 2002 I, I don't know which i don't know if either one is still in print uh because this is the british this is the british uh, rock candy one this is from england with bonus tracks and this one i bought like right from the plasmatic website which i don't even know if it's still around anymore I don't know. I'm not familiar with that one either. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the same song, just way rougher production. But it works. I mean, you know, it's, listen, it's a plasmatic. I don't want something, to, you know, to finesse. I, I just can't, I can't fathom that Dan Hartman produced yeah. plasmatics. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where he came from or the connection there, the story, but yeah. Good Lord. And he did a, he did a great job on it. It sounds no, you know. He did. Good. That's a, that's I did not. Wow, that, I did not know anything about that. That's that's crazy. Yeah, and the, the irony is that Capital you know, rejected the first version, made them you know polish polish it up, re-record everything, and then dropped them after soon after putting the record out. Dude, that that's like George Martin producing King Diamond. Right. right. Hey, maybe that would sound good. I'd buy it. I'd, I'd want to hear that. I like it. I want. To hear I want to hear Why it is too. everybody echoing? Everyone's echoing. Yeah, I hear that too. I hear a real echo. Oh, it's tripping me out. I thought maybe I was tripping. I don't hear it. Someone, does someone have uh, SOT open? No, nobody does. I don't. Hmm. Yeah. Hello. Ian Hartman. Wow. Yep. It just started recently, but uh, who's next? Uh, Scow's next, right? Yep. yep. Yeah, muted. I'm muted. I don't know if that makes difference. Am I echoing? Am I echoing? No, it was you, I think. All right. Well, uh, no, I hear it. Yeah, I hear it. How about every, hear it? everybody put yourself on mute when you're not talking? That might help. I don't hear anything. How's that? Good. Okay. So, uh, let's see. I'm gonna do. Uh, I, I don't remember what number I'm on here. But we got Nick. And I got myself. So, uh, so Nick, there's number two. Chris already mentioned it, but obviously it's an amazing album. It was also on my list. So, uh, Venom Black Metal. Awesome, awesome album. Everything Chris said about it holds up. Uh, I think I like their 1981 album, Welcome to Hell, a little bit more. Uh, it's a little raw, a little, a little slower, but this one's a lot faster. Like you said, this is like the uh, Dawn Brand Metal, Black Metal, Death Metal. It all, it all came from Genesis. Like They were the godfathers of all that stuff. And uh, every song you mentioned on it was freaking incredible. So, uh, yep, that's Nick's choice. Now, for myself, I don't even remember what number I'm on here. So I'll just do two quick ones to go through it. Uh, one that I don't think is going to be on anybody's list, but for 1982, I bet you this was the hardest, fastest, and heaviest album in the world by far for that year. And that is the British band Discharge, Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. Uh, they were kind of a uh, hardcore punk band at the time, but... Uh, way heavier than anything that had come before and a huge influence on thrash metal, like Metallica, Slayer, uh, Exodus, all those guys were, uh, were big, uh, big influence from uh, discharge. So this album, it's, uh, it's hardcore, but it's, it's heavy shit. Like if you're into old thrash metal, like Exciter, uh, old stuff like Motorhead, Slayer, Metallica, and you've never heard of this album, uh, check it out. So hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing by discharge. And, uh, let's see, I think, I, you know, I'll do one more quick too, obviously. Since I mentioned them already, 1982, the last album, unfortunately, with Fast Eddie Clark, fucking Motorhead, Iron Fist. 
uh, amazing, amazing album. Uh, I think it's my least favorite of the albums they did with the, uh, you know, Filthy Lemmy and uh, Fast Eddie, but it's still, you know, that's, you know, least favorite compared to what Overkill, Ace of Spades and uh, Bomber. So, and obviously the self title, but still an awesome album. You know, the title track is probably my favorite Motorhead song in the world, Iron Fist. Mm-hmm. The whole album is just phenomenal. So I think I got all of them between Nick and myself. So I think I'm good. So there we go. Fucking Motorhead, Iron Fist. And that artwork is just classic, too, with the freaking fist there. Just amazing. Yeah, Butch, the echo's coming from you. As soon as I muted you, it stopped. I don't know. Unmute. We can't hear you. He's unmuted. There you go. He's still muted. Turn the volume down. See if that helps. Okay. Sounds better now. Sounds Steve, better now, yeah. So is it my turn now? It is. I've lost every album yes. on my list. I don't have any left. So sad. There's no, I mean, I had Kiss Creatures of the Night. I'm like, okay, nobody picked that. Plasmatics. And then Motorhead Iron Fist, which Ryan had. So I guess I'm going to talk about Iron Maiden, not where the beast. Well, nobody, nobody else did, right? What's that? Everybody saving it. Uh, so, Iron Maiden, number the beast, probably if not Judas. It's always that Iron Maiden versus Priest. Both of those albums on fire. I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Opening up with Invaders, Children of the Dam, The Prisoner, 22 Acacia Avenue, first side two, The Number of the Beast, Run to the Hills, Gangland. And the epic hallowed be thy name so uh number of the beasts we can talk about that i mean my next pick was plasmatics if chris allo was working a night like nick was i could have got that in before he did but uh or if i got in before he did and of course uh i got to see the plasmatics on coupe de tot tour a couple wow. times saw them at the civic center and i also saw them at the chance one of the most memorable concerts I saw at the chance I we were talking about Manowar earlier I saw early Manowar at the chance too and my ears are still suffering from that show because I was fucking <laughs> loud but uh Plasmatics uh Mistress of Taboo Put Your Love Into Me Rock and Roll No Class I mean that album was on fire and it's too bad that we lost Wendy and it's she was one of the legends in rock and roll. It's another we talked about people that are overlooked a little bit in the and a little bit oh, yeah. in 2021. I think that you could say that Wendy O is one of those people, and she was one of the strongest female front women in the business. So uh, I guess that's all I got left. But uh, you'll come back to me, and I'll look up something else for my number one. We got honorable mentions. Forgot to do that. Honorable mentions. How do we have any of those left? Oh, come on. You can think of something, Steve. I, gotta, I better pull up Wikipedia quick then again. <laughs> Don't cheat. Butch, what do you got next? You got to cheat. It's not my brain anymore. I'm too old. <laughs> Yay! I thought, he, I thought he might like that one. Just and mine's autographed by my friend Brad Gillis on it. Oh, oh who cares? I still said it first. <laughs> I had to have him sign this. This album means so much to me. Um, yeah, like, like Lynn was saying, is you know, I, I know I get into arguments with people or I have over the years, you know, saying that it's people say this as sacrilege the way that they did this, the old Sabbath songs, but whatever, fuck you. Gillis kicks the ass out of those fucking songs in this 82, so he gives it a modern spin to everything. Tommy Aldridge destroys <laughs> on that fucking record. Hello. <laughs> All you need to hear, forget about Ozzy. And, and at this point, most people do know if you're a fan of this record, you know that it's Ozzy's vocals are all recorded after the fact, are all done in the yeah. studio. Yeah. I'm fortunate enough to have I played two shows in 1982 at the Ritz. Um, I have both recordings of it, they're both soundboard recordings. And if you've anyone, you can find them on YouTube. If you go and listen to the, the tapes of those shows. You'll see why Ozzy had to go through the vocals. It sounds like Carol Channing singing <laughs> Symptom of the <laughs> Universe. It's it's oh. horrendous. Oh. It's so awful. But the band is on fire. I, I'll take the way that they do those Sabbath songs over listening to how Sabbath did them originally. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I know that the comments now or whatever. I don't Absolutely. Care. 
Fuck yeah. No way. Fucking turn symptoms of the universe up on 10. Kidding me? That's my favorite recording guitar tone. He kicks all that stuff in the ass. He does all his bar stuff. He just gives it an 80s flair to those 70s classics. And I'll always love that fucking record. So yeah, that Uh, without a a doubt. That's that's my number two. I, I don't care what anyone says. You go, you can go listen to Iomi and, and early stuff, and it was very psychedelic. And you know, I'm not shitting on Sabbath. I love Sabbath, but by 1982, that was considered old. And g- having those guys come in and put a modern spin on it with a modern guitar tone and a modern take on it, fabulous, fabulous. Amen. I, I would love for Tony Iomi to start a Night Ranger fucking tribute band. And then <laughs> fuck Brad Gillis and solos. Just do whatever the fuck he wants in, in between songs. Just fucking jerk off during. You can't fucking tell me what you love me or whatever the fuck those songs are. I would I would personally love that. But I would love to hear Butch Jones's fucking reaction to Tony Iommi not doing Brad Gillis's solos note for note. I guarantee you he would shit a shit a brick. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> a lot a lot of the things that butch was just talking about i think sydney can echo with me too because we did an ozzy show last week uh, and andrew freeman was on i think yeah. they were kinda, so, you know the same point of view that butch had said uh, that they were kind of saying the same thing last week about that how it just gave a new flair and a new flavor to those songs maybe it's a new flair maybe brad gillett said you know what Fuck it. I don't want to learn all these solos. Who knows? Maybe Brad Gillis is like, you know what? I'm not good enough to do the well, Tony I even be solos. I will, I will oh, hey, listen. Going around and noodle. I'm Who gonna stick up, I'm gonna stick up for my buddy now. I'm gonna stick up for yeah. him. Hey, at least he's not ripping on Sykes. But, Attention. Well, I was thinking Sykes. that. At least they're off the Sykes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know what? And you're and you're and you're half right, Chris, that they it was only like, had like, like a week. They had like what? a week to learn all that those songs and play those two shows. So and right, they knew there was only two, right? So yeah, I mean, I, can, I can't really. I'm kidding around, but you can't really blame the guy for not wanting to learn the fucking solos. He he learned parts of him. You know, he learned the, the key parts and then did his thing to him. Right. But like yeah. I was saying, if you listen to those two shows that that were you know that they actually pulled the music from, you'll hear he made mistakes. And like the first night, he made mistakes on stuff, and then on the second night, he got it right. Because, like you said, they had like a week to learn that set and get it right and play it in front of an audience at the wrist. So, yeah, you know, I, I don't, I'm sure he wouldn't have played it exact anyway, because, you know, none of the guys from the 80s at that time would have played anything note for note. They were trying to make their mark and do their own thing. Right. But no, I get what you're saying. You're, and you're right. I mean, I know you're fucking, you, you're, you're teaching them and shit. And, but you're right. You're right. You only had a certain amount of time. Like, hey, this is why I'm going to fucking do it. And I got, I'm a whammy bar guy. I'm going to get my bar shit in here and, and this become legend. And to me, who was a huge Sabbath fan then and still now, that, that album was sacrilege to me. I can listen to it now and appreciate it. I mean, I, his playing is great. Don't get me wrong, but I don't want to hear those songs played that way. Oh, I do. Yeah, I the, the song would just drive me. I, I, w- I wish it was. No, and I would, I, I would like it more. But yeah, I, I'm with Pete. It, it bugs me. I probably I haven't listened to that album since it came out. I, I like both. I like they're gonna shoot me on a on the questionnaire now. They're gonna I, I have I, I have that I have it and I have it in rotation in my store, but I haven't picked that album and put it up. If I want to listen to Black Sabbath Sabotage and Symptom, I'm gonna listen to the original. That's just my point of view. That's me nah, too. And I, I get it. Like I'm the opposite. Well, I mean, Butch and I have been having this debate for as long as I no know. Kidding. <laughs> I guess <laughs> hence the reason we're friends because we both love that record. Lynn, hey, Lynn is, Lynn's agreeing with Butch, everyone. On the Holy month. shit, exactly. You know why? Because it's still fucking snowing in New York. That means hell really is freezing over. No, it is February. It's, 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 it's <laughs> because of Tommy Aldridge. That's why. It's Tommy Aldridge. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. I love me some Tommy Aldridge. I can't help it. He's a class. He's a legend. I love Tommy. I, I love Rudy too, and you know that's like the only oh, yeah, absolutely. one of the only um, albums that he actually was you know recorded on when he was with yeah. Ozzy at that time because he wasn't on you know Dire either. So I mean I I love Rudy too. So I think that the yeah. band. I mean I think it's just kind of looking at it, it's kind of two different. You know it's you can compare, but also it's hard to compare sometimes. You know 
it's like two different eras and two different oh, sure different entities but, yeah. yeah so all right lynn back to you we're back to me back to i you. thought it was butchy i just went dumbass what oh, we're just talking right. about speaking of the devil dumbass I know, Dick. I forgot. See, I was, I was. Go throw you. all that goodwill out the door. No, they're back. I thought they freaking forgot you, Dick. Well, Butch, maybe you can give us Lynn's pick then. Yeah, really. 1982. No. I don't, I don't know. She threw me up with Roxy music. I didn't see that coming for a while. I love me some Roxy music. Well, whatever. I, you know, you know what? Think about producers and think about one of your favorite bands, Pete Way. 1982 Twisted oh. Sister Under the Blade. That was yeah, that was an honorable okay. mention for sure. So Pete Way produced this record Under the Blade. I love this song. I, mean, I love the record. And the funny thing is, is remember that whole Tipper Gore PMRC that whatever the yeah. hell she was trying to do I, ban the music. Yeah. I think Going she back. actually oh, said it was about like S and M. Again, not that there's anything wrong with that. As I'm in my dungeon. But um, yeah, yeah. Someone you commented know. about your dungeon last week. They're like, why whatever. Is Lynn in, That's all right. Why is Each Lynn his in own. <laughs> Each his own. But it wasn't. It was about Eddie going under the knife for surgery. So screw Tipper Gore. Either way, um, that record for me, Twisted Sister, Under the Blade. Again, they played around this area. They're from this area, and and I love me some Twisted Sister. So I'm gonna go with Twisted Sister, Under the Good Blade, choice. produced by Butch's yeah. buddy there. Yeah, <laughs> you know what it was on my list. That's when Twisted Sister was heavy. Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, you can't not turn that record on and just go nuts, you know? Yeah. It's like one of the heaviest songs they ever did. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. It's good stuff. And Fast Eddie's on it, Ryan. Yep, he is. I love that. That is definitely my favorite Twisted Sister album, By a Country Mile. Love it. Nice. See, I'm throwing you guys for a loop this evening. By a Country Mile or a Country Girl? Country Mile. Country Girl. Good right. sound. Country Mile. <laughs> Sydney, you're up. All right, awesome. Um, so I'm gonna go with my obvious choice. Um, boom. Can you wait? Guess? I can't see it. Hold right. it up better. Rainbow. Straight between oh. the eyes. Rainbow. Ooh, thanks, um, Sydney. <laughs> I sorry, you forgot that too, sorry. Huh? You forgot that too? No, I had it sitting right here. I was like, yeah, yeah unfortunately. It's on my <laughs> I mean, you guys know how I love about Jill and Turner, uh, how I feel about Jill and Turner at this point. Um, you know, this is his uh, second album with the band. And I mean, I love Difficult to Cure as well, but I love this album so much. You know, this has Stone Cold on it, which is just, if you don't love Stone Cold, I don't know what to tell you. Um, get it's that. <laughs> it's all about Death Alley Driver. It's but, but Death oh, Alley yeah, Driver is great. Yeah. I love um I love Bring on the Night. Uh, Miss Mistreated is great. It's just it's just a great album all around. I mean, album. again, um I think Joe's vocals really really shine on this. Um, and uh, I couldn't not mention it. So this is my number two. Uh, I love this album, and uh, yeah, I love it very much. It's in my cassette player as we as we. Speak. Cool. So, <laughs> nice. I saw them on that tour with the so great giant opening for them. Was it who opened up? Stop talking to me, but nice. stop talking about it. Stop <laughs> talking about it. He likes to twist the knife in poor city. I'm gonna every talk time. about that door too. Butch, where did you see it? The Pekip at the Civic Center? Yeah, it was right. It was Rainbow Riot and Aldo Nova. Well, actually, it was Rainbow Aldo Nova and Riot. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that at the Glens Falls Civic Center, and I kind of think it was Rainbow and the Scorpions. That's what it was at the at the Madison Square Garden. Yeah, me and Pete have talked about that. Me? That that also played Nassau Coliseum. Was Coney Hatch warming up? No, not for me. The Scorpions know. opened up for them on that tour. Oh, yeah, two Scorpions. different legs. Two yeah. different legs. I think was, I think yeah, I think funny. Rainbow opened up for the Scorpions. Actually, <laughs> no. I think it was Coney. No, it was Blackout Scorp Tour. Scorpions opened up. Yeah. Scorpions, oh, yeah, okay. Well, the Scorpions destroyed. Yeah, Rainbow them. had the whole big stage set up with the eyes and everything. Oh, like I, that. I just need to I, tell I you how upsetting this is for me. Like, I genuinely, <laughs> like, I literally can't say it enough. Like, it so digs in my soul. Like, I wake up every morning and I'm like, 
I hate this. <laughs> like, why is it 2021? Why is it yeah, not? Yeah, why? Because I feel like I'm living in 1980, and I'm like, you guys hear about that new uh, Michael Shanker album? And everyone around me is like, I don't, you know, like it's just, it's so, it's so devastating. It's so devastating. I, I remember having the the bootleg <laughs> T-shirt that had like Rainbow and Scorpions, and it, it was one of the old fashioned, you know, the jersey ones, and it yeah. had the whole. Uh, straight between the eyes and the back then I had like scorpions and whoever else <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go cry yeah, myself dollar, but parking lot special right wait yeah. a minute let, let me let me let me ruin let me I gotta sit I gotta say this to Sydney too <laughs> Not so, again. yeah to make it even worse I didn't see it I didn't see it but I wanted to as the as that tour was coming closer to Poughkeepsie New York with Rainbow and Riot the other band that was on that tour in 82 was Dokken yep and Dokken got thrown off the, I remember reading this, yeah. Dokken got thrown off the tour kind of early because George Lynch was on fire and Blackmore did not like that very much. So could you imagine seeing that? Rainbow and Dokken? She wouldn't have cared. No, she wouldn't have cared at all. I Dokken. wouldn't have cared? <laughs> you guys are fucking mean. You must not know me then if you think I wouldn't care. <laughs> That's why we're saying it. We're teasing you. We know you would, you would have come busted. Well, like, I mean, I, if it was Dawkins, the Scorpions, and well, the fun thing about that, well, yeah, because um, Don did the demos for Blackout when Klaus me, uh, you know, was having the he was having vocal surgery, so he actually did the demos for Blackout. So that makes sense that they would have been on that tour. Wow, yeah. that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you ever want to get back at Butch, we'll talk about when I saw the Motor had another perfect day at the Chance. Oh man. Then, then Butch will feel like you are now. See, it's not Butch isn't smiling anymore. <laughs> I want you guys to know we have six hundred angry. We have six hundred and sixty-six people watching right now. Oh, oh shit. That shit's metal. We're all going spot. right to hell. The number of the beast. You That's know right. what, Steve? That's the closest that I would have ever come to seeing Brian Robertson. And that was nineteen eighty three. Then I haven't, you know I haven't come like close to, to Robertson since then. My friend Gary Dostal, who some of us know here, uh, comes to my house for the parties, we could tell you a whole story about him and Robbie at the bar at the chance. It's a good story. So if you ever have a 4th of July party again, and we can gather together in person, uh, I'll make sure Gary tells you that story. I, I look forward I'll to that. I'll definitely bring it up. I'll definitely bring if it up. If we ever can hang out again. <laughs> All right, uh, my next pick, uh, I was going to say Rainbow, but I'll go to my next one here. So all sorts of people asking, Pete, how come you haven't picked White Snake yet? Well, because they're oh, right it's here. On Damn you. It's on my honorable mention. I love this album. This is really under, you know, a lot of those early White Snake albums are really underrated and almost nobody yes, ever talks about them because, of course, you know, the 87 album and Slide It In is the are the albums that everybody talks about. But, man, like come and get it and saints and sinners and i mean all those pre-slided yeah. in albums are really strong i mean young blood bloody luxury rough and ready crying in the rain is originally from this oh, album right oh, yeah. maybe not as powerful as from the other album but uh, here yeah. i go again also really? on this album originally uh title track is so good um man love and affection a lot of really fun album produced by martin birch of course and uh, i totally dig this i love love the early white snake Back to Mr. Allen. Okay. Uh, when well, we, I know, um, gonna, I know he's going to pick something I have. Uh, yeah, I don't think you have this one, Steve. I don't think anybody <laughs> else has this one. Uh, just, just a guess, but I don't think anybody uh, has picked this one. But this one, I, I think it's a, it's a perfect record, uh, in my opinion. Uh, this band was a huge influence on, uh, on Metallica. Uh, they wore nothing but shirts from this band from like. 1984 to like 1989 i know when we did the time machine episode i thought you know it would be really cool i don't know how the audiences would react but i would love to go back to 1982 and do like a show with like bands that were like crossover bands between metal and punk so of course uh, i would want motorhead of course i would want venom of course i would want the plasmatics and without question no doubt, I would want the Misfits with their Ooh. landmark 1982 record, uh, Walk Among Us. I mean, with tracks sure, like Stones, Vampira, I Turned Into a Martian. Uh, in my opinion, this has got to be the most successful reunion in the history of rock and roll because these guys went from 
playing uh, in front of 50 people in dive bars to selling out Madison Square Garden and the L.A. Forum. And, of course, if you're a Misfits fan of the Walk Among Us record, you got to go to Rock Fantasy Woo! and get three different uh, Misfits Walk Among Us action yes. figures in the three different colors. Uh, but, yeah, I love Glenn Danzig. Glenn Danzig. I love anything fucking <laughs> Misfits campaign, but especially Walk Among Us. Uh, it's just a masterpiece. And uh, yeah, that's great. Great, and Chris all great. great Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Danzig stories, too. So we won't talk yeah. about that tonight. We got a couple. <laughs> All right, Ryan. Ryan and Nick. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is uh, my number one pick. This is easy. Uh, it's my favorite band of all time. Nick's favorite band of all time. It's my favorite album on my favorite band, and it's my favorite lineup on my favorite album on my favorite band. We have Clive Burr and Bruce Dickinson on the same album. It can only be Number of the Beast. Uh, everything you already said about it is true. I've heard this album approximately 478 billion times since I was 13. Uh, that might be a low number. Uh, Every song on this album is, is phenomenal. Uh, and as much as I love Paul on the first two albums, and I do love Paul, I to this day maintain that where Steve wanted to take the band, he wasn't really the right guy for the job. So him leaving and Bruce coming on, you know, everybody's got an opinion on that, or, you know, just like Asshole, everyone's got one. But I think Bruce coming on brought them up to the next level, and this album was the proof of that. But they still had Clive on board, who hit the drums like a fucking howitzer battery. And uh, the way he played the drums on this and the combination, like a little more epic songwriting, uh, there's just nothing like it. And that I've just heard this, I don't know, I put this album on, it's like it takes you to a happy place. Uh, and I know I was talking to Nick about it before, and he said the same thing. It's a spirit album by them, kind of maybe tied with peace of mind. And uh, there's just really nothing else I could say about it besides after the show's over, I'm going to go listen to it because I just love it that fucking much. And so nice. I got four four quick honorable mentions that nobody's mentioned. They're all English and uh, all pretty obscure. So I'll start the first one. Great new wave of British heavy metal band with a very risque artwork. And is Witchfinder General. The album is Death Penalty. Oh, uh, great record. I got that on a T-shirt. You can't wear it at the church on Sunday. <laughs> no. Nah. Uh, also, well, you make- could, you just get some funny looks. Yeah, well, you can. But I have a T-shirt of that. But uh, also, yeah, so nice do I. Cool. Great new wave of British heavy metal album produced by Fast Eddie Clark from Motorhead. It's a tank, built yeah. hounds of Hades. That's a that's a it's it's kind of a probably the most Motorhead ish new wave band besides Motorhead, although they're, they're not really part of that. You know, they kind of in their own little universe. But this it's like a very it's a heavy metal album, but it's got that Motorhead kind of like punk nasty sound to it. Uh, another English band, and this band was just like Discharge, a huge influence on Thrash, on Black Metal, on Death Metal. Uh, the last Metallica album, which I wasn't really a fan of, but it had a song called Spit Out the Bone. It was a direct reference to this band. And this is a GBH, City Baby Attacked by Rats. And again, wow. just like Discharge. For 1982, this is like the heaviest shit in the world along with Venom. Uh, it's just, it's, it's hardcore punk, but it's very fast, very heavy, very metallic, really, really good stuff. And uh, you listen to this and you can definitely see where the, uh, the influence came on. A lot of like Metallica and Slayer, Exodus, Dark Angel, all that stuff. And the last one, also from 1982, also English. Total left uh, left turn here is uh, Kate Bush, Hounds of Love. Nice. Down, so they did amazing album. Uh, obviously, Running Up That Hill has become her biggest hit, but the whole album's amazing. You know, uh, Big Sky, Cloud Busting, the title track. So that is my four honorable mentions. And Nick awesome. didn't give me any honorable mentions, so he'll have to share mine. Steve. It's back to me. Well, I'm going to mention a couple albums that no one else has mentioned from that year. It's a live album, and it's from a band that I think Ryan Scow and Pete Pardo are kind of partial to. Blue Easter Cult Extraterrestrial Live. Yeah, good album. Great album. So we will mention from that year, because I wasn't prepared, because everybody used up all my picks, uh, Black Sabbath did Live Evil. Yep. It wasn't the great, greatest production, greatest recording. They hated each other. While they were in the studio, as we heard directly from Vinnie Apathy a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it was just, uh, but I, I mean, I loved the record when it came out. Uh, I guess I'm gonna, of course, someone else has to talk about and go into depth a little bit about Screaming for Vengeance. Everybody thought they were gonna pick it, so we didn't really talk about that. I'm not gonna because I'm picking Restless and Wild, even though Butch talked about it. That album, I mean, I had Breaker already, and I knew how heavy that was, and I just couldn't wait. So Accept came out with their next album and it didn't disappoint. 
from the beginning as fast as a shark, going into restless and wild, going into the nasty attack of the head of a pack. Then you had to shake your heads. You had their version of Neon Knights, nothing like Black Sabbath. And then track side two, you had Get Ready, Demon's Knight, Flash Rockin' Man, Don't Go Steal My Soul Away, and Princess of the Dawn. And I know you guys like the new except I've had a real hard time getting into them. Except without Udo is blasphemy to me. And I yeah. did the new acts except records. I didn't listen to the new one yet, but to me, my so my heart's with Udo and those early albums. And uh I was I that was my pick. And uh, of course people can tear me up, but I no nothing against Mark because I love TT Quick also. I just, I think they're great, but I just don't like them as much as I, if I, I when that first, first happened, I'm like, well, it would sound better if I had Udo. So. I'll ask you this. Do they yeah. sound like Accept? They do. Yeah. I think they do. Yeah, I guess. And they, they, sound like Accept, they sound like Accept. They don't have the guy that looks like Yoda singing for them. Udo, no. Udo's <laughs> voice, they have to tune down the B. He's so... I mean, listen, listen to the stuff that he does on his solo, on his solo stuff. All he does is live. He's, the, the guy's got 15 live records. Uh, he's got a lot of records since then, yeah. Yep. And I, I got to see when he came back yep. and did. They accept sets, and that, those are great times, too. But uh, I'll, I'll take Mark. I'm sorry, Ryan. Oh, I just uh, I realized I'm looking through this before I'm putting this away. I fucked up. This is 1985, so delete everything I said about it. Ah, <laughs> it's a good record. It's a great ah, album. Like, show yourself out to the door, my friend. I'm looking. Like, wait a second. I fucked up. I he, fucked up. He, yeah. We at least X, five uh, five viewers caught that, Ryan. So I was. Just gonna... <laughs> yep, this is 85. Big Red X. Still, yeah, still a good album though, but wrong year. <laughs> Is it my turn? That's now? all right, Ryan. To be human is to err. I fuck up all the time. Don't worry. Ah, about shut it. up. No, wow. leave him alone. Shut up. Leave him alone. Damn. Pick it up for Ryan. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to Ryan. Everybody Rough makes crap. mistakes. <laughs> I'm not even touching this. Oh, right, Butch, yeah. you're up, Butch. You better not. Except you better for not. Ryan never makes mistakes. He's a... Shut Ryan, up. Pull up. Ryan, bring up your number of the beast record. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. So look at look at the difference from the original from 1982. And look at look at the color difference. Yeah, it's totally different. I yeah. never realized that. Just the this camera. Is a, uh, this is a. No, it's not. <laughs> this is a reissue. It's, it's, it's remarkable. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's color remarkable. It's remar remarkable. <laughs> there's a lot more inking <laughs> on the new one. That Ryan's holding yeah. up looks more detailed to me. Maybe. Yeah, there's a lot yeah, more inking. Yeah. Than yeah. Really? Yeah. I have not looked over in the corner behind me. You can actually see the black light poster. See it? Okay, Steve, shut up. It's my turn. Blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it has to be Beast. I mean, I got this in 82 when it came out. I saw him on this tour, opening for Judas Priest in, uh, at the New Haven Coliseum in, in 82. Um, one of the greatest double bullets I've ever seen. A hungry band that was ready to take over the world and and a, a veteran band that had put out a really good record, although it's not my favorite Priest record in the slightest. I do like it, but it's not making my 1982 list at all. Um, but this record, man, and the, uh, the song that starts this album is one of my favorite Maiden songs of all time, and they've never played it live. Mm -hmm. I've heard that Bruce Dickinson even said that, that they could never play it live because it's too fast, but... For him to try to catch his breath to sing it, it's impossible. And my God, Invaders is such an amazing intro song. I, I, I always heard that Steve didn't like that song. Is why they didn't want to play it, which I think is bullshit. Really? Yeah. I think it's one of the best opening tracks they ever did, along with the AC Absolutely. Top. It's, it's the greatest started. opening track until the next record. And I love and I love Beast, and Beast is one of my favorite records, but it is not my favorite, but... Peace of Mind is my favorite Maiden record. And I know you love Clive. I love Clive too. But the intro in 83 on Peace of Mind with Nico McBrain saying to the world, I'm the new drummer of Maiden with that intro of where oh, it was great. there. Great. Mind That's blown. Cool. <laughs> and I'll give you 
Two uh, honorable mentions. Len mentioned one uh, under the blade was definitely one that I had on my list for sure. I mean, I could go through 15 records, but the one other record I will mention that no one has mentioned, um, I'm, I'm, and I'm surprised Pete didn't mention it, unless Pete was about to mention it. And if he's about to mention it, I'm glad that I ran on his parade and I got to it first. Oh. <laughs> Is Y&T's Black Tiger. Oh, it was on my honorable mention. Good Black shot. Tiger. It, it agonized me to try to figure out the, the top file. I'm like, how can I not have Black Tiger on this? That record is ferocious. I yeah. love that. I love using that word ferocious because it is it's it's a great term. But Black Tiger is another perfect record. And my God, Max Norman uh, produces ass off on that record. Man, oh man, that record sounds phenomenal. That's just a great one. So those are my two honorable mentions. Very good. Back to Lynn. Nice. Nice, it's me. All right, so my last one, um, again, I was going to pick Free Screaming for Vengeance because we all know how I feel about Rob Halford. No, but, but, you know, Lynn, no one's picked it, so you can talk about it. Yeah. I, I don't want, you know, I, I'm going to go with something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the ball in left field again. And I'm going to go with another record that I played the whole time I was pregnant with both my kids, and I played it while they were in the cradle. And it's Simon and Garfunkel's Concert in the Park. And wow. I love Simon and Garfunkel. Do you? Um, yes, I do, Dick. <laughs> Would you like to get together and listen to it sometime, baby? No, I'll pass. I didn't think so. Ah. Um, either way, uh, the concert was in 1981. I don't want to listen to it with you either. And uh, <laughs> their album was released in 1982. And, uh, you know, for, after that concert, they actually it brought the guys back together for a few years. And, and I love all those tunes. So for me, Concert in the Park, definitely. Um, I, I go with number three. It's not really my number one. Screaming for Vengeance would have been my number one, but it was mentioned. I know nobody talked about it, but that's okay. And then I do have a few honorable mentions, which were already mentioned already, but I do have a Get Nervous Pat Benatar is on my honorable mentions. Eh, I don't care. Vacation the Go-Go's because I like the Go-Go's. Uh, yeah. Stop being a girl. And I, oh, okay. Again, I'll put the strap on on for Butch. And uh, wow. Michael Jackson's Thriller, because I like Michael Jackson. So there. Can you hit Nobody mute, mentioned please? Duran Duran on that show yet. Hit mute. No, I don't want to. Hit mute. Me. Come here Coach and make wishes me. Wishes he could mute her. Uh, I do want to say I do want to say something before we continue because uh, I'm yeah. sitting here kind of trying to moderate and watch the comments a little bit. Everybody who's watching, if this is maybe the first time you've watched this, <laughs> this is how we operate here. Everybody here is friends or our friends, I should say. It's like we were all sitting around a campfire talking together, all right? This is oh, fun to joke around with each other. We all <laughs> occasionally give each other a hard time. Please don't get upset no. thinking that we're, we're purposely trying to disrespect each other. This is all no. fun here, all right? Uh, it's like it's all in the family. So, I mean, there, there are people who are like, I can't believe he's talking to her like that. And this, that, it's like, Always, oh, every week. Everybody from New York. Well, no, maybe when things Listen, are normal, dude, we can every have, single like, week. Butch it, and I either text or we're talking on the phone and we're like, did you see that guy's comment? He was offended for you. Well, I'm offended that he's offended. And we just laugh about it because neither one of us are offended. Like we could we could say F you to each other and be like, F you, I love you back. And we're at, you know, like it just is what it is. Maybe, maybe, we are, a, maybe we should just have an insult episode. Or maybe we could book a match between Butch Jones and Lynn. During the summer, where they can get There's together and plenty. actually arm wrestle There's or been something. Plenty. Like Mid South Championship Wrestling, Steve, make it a, a, a strap on on a pole match. First one to wow. climb up the pole and get the strap on gets to use it. So uh, the, I don't know if you can film that on here. So. <laughs> to, go, to go with what Pete was saying, for anyone that is new that doesn't know, especially me and Lynn, me and Lynn have been friends this year, will be 37 years that we've been uh, friends. We're so, old. yes. You don't get it, and you can't see the smirk. Well, I, I don't know how you can't see the smirk. I say something mean to her, and I'm laughing right after it. So it is nothing but love. This is how we are, whether we were on camera or, like she said, when we're texting each other or we're on the phone with each other after the show for three hours until 1 o'clock in the morning, it's the same shit. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. She's one of the best friends I have in the world, and that's why I talk to her the way I talk to her, because I can't. 
There's nothing but love here. Exactly. And to the person who just said to shut up, Pete, we're allowed to say what you want. You certainly can say what you want in the chat, but there are people who are acting like, I can't believe they're talking to each other like this. I believe it. If you don't like it, then, you know, I mean, just relax. It's like we're just joking. We're just joking. You better say something. We're talking music and joking like people do when they're can say something. Like everybody started out. Watch. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, I wasn't thinking shoes. about it. Uh, I'm not sure I'll have to come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney, what's your final pick of the day? Um, so my final pick, I'm going to go with the album that I have behind me Ooh. as my number one, um, Scorpions Blackout. I told this story before, uh, but when I was – you know, Scorpions are one of my favorite bands um, of all time. I love them so much. Uh, this isn't my favorite Scorpions album. I think I mentioned this a couple episodes ago. Animal Magnetism is actually my my favorite Scorpions record. But uh, when I was really young, I have memories of Last year. hearing, you know, no one like you on the radio. And I would sit in the back seat of the car and I would just lose my mind because I loved that song so much. Um, and it's, you know, I know it's the biggest hit on this album and it's whatever I, you know, I, I still to this day love that song. Um, and it's one of my very favorites. Um, but it's just a great, it's just a great album all around. I mean, obviously you have no one like you, you have Blackout, uh, Dynamite, Arizona. There's a real, there's a really great songs on this. And, you know, it's obviously one of their, their biggest albums for a reason. So I had to have this be my number one, just cause it's really special to me and really important to me. Um, the honorable mentions that I have definitely be White Snake, Saints and Sinners. Um, I love early era White Snake. I think, you know, one of the first episodes we did on the show, I talked about, or that I was on of the show, I talked about how I really kind of got into early White Snake, you know, eventually. And it's, you know, some of my favorite albums and music so far. So, you know, obviously Crying in the Rain and, you know, Here I Go Again, those were the original versions. And, uh, Love that. Black Tiger, Y&T, again, Don't Want to Lose is probably my favorite Y&T song. Um, I love that album. Uh, yeah, I mean, everyone pretty much mentioned all of my, uh, you know, favorites, my honorable mentions. I mean, obviously, Screaming for Vengeance is right up there. You can't really not talk about that one when you're talking about 1982. Um, and yeah, there's there's a, probably a lot more that I'm missing. And I know that people are probably going to mention why I didn't pick the Alice Cooper record that was released in 1982. Um, and I, I'm going to be honest, I'll talk about it maybe at a different time later, but I don't really like those Blackout albums, really. Um, I like a couple of different songs here and there, but I'm kind of that rare diehard fan. A lot of diehard fans really love those albums, and I'm not the biggest fan. So I'm definitely didn't either. make... I'm not either. Me it's, either. I like There's some songs of off of Dada, and I like Flesh the Fashion. If I had to pick one of that period, Flesh the Fashion, I don't really consider... To be the blackout period that's what he, alice calls it um he was on a lot of substances at that time period as i'm sure many of you know uh but i'm just like zipper catch a skin special forces um i'm not really too big on so it's not definitely not my top three unfortunately but yeah that's all i've got oh oh wait and really quick i wanted to show my shirt because i don't think a lot of people have seen it and i thought it was really funny because we were talking about docking so i wanted to show off my shirt it says Doc and Donuts, and there's Don Doc. <laughs> so there we go. That's my fun shirt for the week. <laughs> Love me that shirt. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. My final pick for today can. is going to be a tie for the one that I didn't, that I totally spazzed on. So Gary Moore, Quarters of Power, and I got to go with Assault Attack. I, you know, this is my favorite Shanker album. I love it so much. Uh, the best Grand Bonnet has ever sounded on an album great rhythm section loads of great songs and that quarters of power album I, i'm killing myself for forgetting that but, uh thank you for reminding me butch i i greatly appreciate it yeah I that's got your that, back. that's gotta be on my list so um there you have it everybody well we're a little early so uh, how about a quick little last uh last statement of the day chris what do you got i like pizza i like pizza <laughs> hey you're talking now you're talking my language yeah yeah, pizza. I mean, I'm kind of bummed that well, we take all these questions. Nobody has asked me a sandwich question yet. So yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm here waiting. People, are, are, are a million people asking you questions, Pete? Uh, no, nah, there's not a lot of questions. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, there's just a lot of uh, 
comments. <laughs> a lot of comments. Yeah, a lot of comments. Is Chris Allo wearing a purple Venom shirt? Uh, I'm. I don't know colors, but it's definitely a Venom shirt. I don't think it's purple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm colorblind, so I don't know what color it is. It does look kind of purplish, I have to say. Yeah. Anybody on the panel like Michael Jackson's Thriller? I oh, said no. it as my honorable mention. I mean, yeah, it's, it's Thriller. Yeah. I mean, you listen to that. What the hell? Like, I said it, bro. Yeah, Lynn already said she liked it. I love that. I guess she said it. Jackson Jones, who's asked this question quite a few times today, wants to know what everybody's opinion on the band Death is. I like him. Awesome. I like, love him. Like the Chuck Children band, yeah, Chuck, the Black Chuck's band. Chuck's band. Oh, yeah. the Chuck Children band, yeah, that's great. Love those guys. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Death is one of the pioneers, and Chuck was a visionary, and Chuck was awesome, and and I miss him all the time. Still, we I did a little a show about him on my channel. If you're a Death fan, check it out from a few weeks ago in Rock Fantasy Files. We had Terry Butler, we had Gene Hoagland, we had uh, one of Chuck's childhood friends, and uh, it, it just touched my soul talking about Chuck so much. Green bloody glow. Yeah, I mean, I love spiritual healing. That's a really great. They just the anniversary of that was just the other day. So, spiritual I, I healing, do listen to uh, that. human, uh, human individual great. thought patterns. Yeah, all that you know. Here's another question that got asked a lot. Uh, anybody like pornography by The Cure? Yes. No. How about how about regular pornography? Yeah, I was gonna say I I, I like regular porn, but I, I know uh, I was like, hey, that's kind of personal. <laughs> no, that's a good album. I like that a lot. It's a good goth rock. I don't album. care. I don't either. Uh, do any of the squares like Space Slug? I have no idea what Space Slug is. I like Space 1999. I like Space Ritual by. I don't Hawk. know what it is. I do too. Yeah, I don't know what Space Slug is. I have no idea. I like Space Invaders. I also like Space Invaders. Martin Landau, Space 1999, great uh, sci-fi series. From I remember that well, Steve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell Butch Lemieux is better than Gretzky. Ooh. I don't know what that means. Tim's fighting. <laughs> <laughs> That's some hockey Mario stuff. Mario Lemieux. No. So is Mark Messier. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Ask Butch if he likes the New Jersey Devils. The Devils. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what else we got here right, can I uh, hollow that? man battle hymns was mentioned very early on in the show yes it was what else anybody like survivor yes yeah. yes yeah. we like survivor i love I hate that show <laughs> on the show when they put when they put the guys light out and they're like you're not a survivor they kick you off the it's island so terrible. That. Survivor <laughs> had the big hit the eye of the tiger from rocky no it's you know a great a great survivor album. album a great survivor yeah. album is yeah. signs i love that album survivor is, is way heavier than you think they are yeah well, which what was that record you turned me on to that one survivor record premonition that was so good it's the second album so it's phenomenal I'll be the sole survivor. Frankie Long Sullivan band. is a great guitar player and a great songwriter. Great band. We got Steve singing. I was going to say, feel like I'm at a concert, man. Got Steve yeah, Keeler Steve singing. <laughs> Bust it out, Steve. Come on. The Halloween's got a great survivor song, too. That's right. You know, I remember the album. That I can't believe that I actually forgot this as a honorable mention. Now that we're, we're, we're wasting time and we've talked about Brad Gillis enough, I can't believe that I didn't say this before. Night Rangers Dawn Patrol. Yeah, it's a good one. It was oh. released the same week or the same day as Ozzy Speak of the Devil. Oh, yep. oh you had a real nice. Brad Gillis smor smorgasbord that oh. day, Butch. Yeah. <laughs> Gillis, I hope you see this. <laughs> and Brian oh, Kellogg, yes, Gillen, Magic by Gillen. That's another really good choice. Ooh, that was on my So, Ryan, uh, what was your uh, – Ryan got to play the new pinball machine I brought into the store this week. Oh, heavy metal? Metal. Yeah magazine the movie pinball and it was really good I, it's surprising to me when i i wasn't gonna was buy it, it, I got it on a loan and it was amazing it, it has halloween and it. it has amorphous in it it has uh blue Easter cult doing veteran of the psychic wars it has the cheap trick song from the movie sebastian bach went in and re-recorded the heavy metal song and it, it's just a really cool rock and roll game so now that i have it of course I guess I'm going to be stuck. There you go. Yeah. 
It's uh, I I liked it a lot, Steve. It had a lot of the songs. Yeah, it obviously had uh, the Bloyster the Cold song. The only, it had Bob Rules, the only thing. <clears throat> yeah, no, I don't have Bob Rules. And the only other thing is they were really bragging about how the character, the girl, what's her name, Tarna. Tarna. Uh, it talks for the first time, and they gave her like a voice that sounds like a valley girl. Yeah, in the movie, she doesn't talk. She just slices people in half with the sword. Which and, is, oh, that's that, badass. That character should have more of a like tougher, maybe more like a not Wendy O, but more of a, like a tougher voice, like a warrior, more than like, hey, it's your turn to play. Steve, when I was playing it, I heard that voice, and I'm like, there's no way it can be the voice of the character from the movie. She doesn't talk. She just shows up. No, well, they were talk. bragging how that's the first time you ever heard the voice of Tarno. So, I don't want to hear that. That's dumb. Get rid of it. It sounds like yeah. the same girl that did the voiceovers for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pinball. We're way off topic on 1982. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe update the firmware. Delete that voice and just go back to uh, Heavy Metal. The movie was from what? At what year was that? From 1981. 81. 81. Okay. And the soundtrack fucking rules. And it just, I got this actually. It I got this Rock Fantasy uh, a couple months ago. At that great game. Oh yeah, because they reissue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how many times that uh, how many times did I see that in the theater, like driving movies? That was kind of like a Rocky Horror yeah. picture show of that, where or like you know Led Zeppelin or Pink Floyd, The Wall, where you'd kind of go. It was like going to a concert at the theater. Yes, I saw that. I want to know where you got your shirt. Um, I got it as a gift, so a lot of people are going to be disappointed. But if you type in. Doc and Donuts shirt. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find it. It's like, to be honest, I hope it's officially licensed. It's it's one of those things that like you probably just <laughs> saw. On it. It. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, oh, this is really cool, but it was a gift. So. Yeah. So here's the comment of the day: How did two lovely women like Lynn and Sydney get mixed up with a bunch of aging hooligans like you guys? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> That's a million dollars. Plummet. Well, they like cool guys. <laughs> yeah, we like cool guys. <laughs> I don't know. They uh, like people that like good music, I guess. <laughs> and so it's all about the music. And Sydney is only 21, but she has the same mind as a lot of us. So she knows more about some of the bands than I do from that era right now, I think. <laughs> I'm an old soul. I you do are. Again. And I mean, I say the same <laughs> thing about Ryan. When I met Ryan, not, how many years have I known you now? You were a young kid. And I'm like, how does he know these bands? Like years 20, ago, yeah, a long time ago. Years old, and he knows all about like these bands like he was around. Nope. But now, yeah, yeah that was a long time ago. Holy shit. Yeah, I find myself saying things like, because uh, I, you know, I just talked to uh, Mark Weiss and I was I was talking about his book in my podcast and I was like, he just really captured what the 80s felt like. And I was like, like, I wasn't even around. Like, how do I know what the 80s felt like? I like that's just like shit I say. And I'm like, I don't know what the 80s felt like, but I'm just assuming that that he captured because now that's what it feels like. <laughs> oh, he definitely felt he definitely did. That was a good that was definitely right on point. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Him and All right, Frank guys, White. I think uh, we're going to call it an evening, right? Hey, right. Pete, yes. before we call it an evening, can I please just say that the Chance in Poughkeepsie, New York, has announced the show of November 14th. It's Jeff Tate doing the 30th anniversary of um, Empire and Rage for Order. So look for the tickets to be released because my so Jet City to, Woman will be played. We get to the see the show, show that we all saw at the very end of quarantine. We get yes. to back and, see and we get to meet up together and see it together. That's the but beauty again. of the city. So, Lynn, do you know if the chance is opening before that, though? Because I know Ding we Bat are hoping to open before that and praying, but we don't know for sure. Dingbats in New Jersey is opening already in the end of March and Sanctuary. Yeah, we hope so. We hope so. I, when Nikki and Frank tell me when we're opening, I will let everybody know. Of course, I mean, or Carolyn and Joe, when they tell me we're opening. But that was the first concert announcement, so I just wanted to share that with everybody. Yeah. Of course, the National Acts have to be booked deeper and further, but when they first open, it'll probably more like some local bands and stuff playing them. So basically, um, the Chance just announced the show that they've already had two years ago. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to love it and have a good time. Just did. You don't have to come. You don't have to come. 
I hope I mean, it happens. Chance, I really, the I really had happen. something on board in like June too. Didn't they have like a? They a have Europe? something still. They have some things on the board, but we'll see like, what happens. Like, so oh, I think it was Symphony X, wasn't it, or something like that? I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, 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 some well, well, ones. Well, I mean, Jones well, Beach released their schedule uh, this week, and PNC in New Jersey released a schedule. We just have to see if it's all going to happen, but uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that things get yeah. back to normal soon. I hope it. I hope it does happen. When I saw that announcement, I was like, fingers crossed that that you know that we happens. all get to hang and watch it together. Yeah, <laughs> with masks on though. So speaking Whatever. of cruise like related stuff, I'm going to plug a CD oh. here right now. Plug if you haven't heard it, definitely check it out. Todd Latore's new album, which is called uh, oh, cool. Rejoice in the Suffering. It's, it's great, really is good. It? And it's nice. quite heavy. Pro it, it's heavier, heavier than any of the Queensryche. Either version is done in quite a lot. Oh, really? Wow. It's I was wondering how that was because I got it in the store. I hadn't heard it yet. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of it's kind of like a Nevermore album. Way oh. heavier than I was expecting. When he released the first yeah. single, I was like, "What?" Well, I, I, you know, I was expecting something along the lines of like, "Oh, kind of what you know, Queensryche sounds like, kind of like the '80s, you know, metal throwback kind of sound." And it was not that at all. I was like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah. Nice. It's quite good. Well, while you're plugging um music, I would like to plug Plush. Brooke Lauren, she's a drummer. She's a friend yes. of mine, friends with her parents. Um, they have a song out called Hate, and I would like to plug them. Mariah Formica from, I think she was on American Idol, but she sings. Brooke Lauren is an amazing drummer for 16, 17 years old, whatever she is now. And uh, you got to check that out. Plush, Hate, it's freaking awesome. They've actually played it on Octane, um, and they have some really good stuff coming up. I met so. Brooke for the first time. I, I played the chance. I opened up for the Limelight Rush tribute show one time with the band I was in in late high school. And yeah. she was at that show. And I met her for the first time. We've stayed, you know, we stayed connected over the years. And she, you know, came out that band. Yeah. The first the first song was really great. I was She's amazing. Like women, you know, especially like yeah. on my age too, like going out there and yeah. putting together a band like that. So she's ridiculous on drums. I mean, she out drums guys that are in their friggin' thirties. It's like you watch her and I'm like, what? <laughs> it's crazy. She's but awesome. I think if you Google her, she's on, like, it says Brooke C. If you, yeah. like, <clears throat> she's on YouTube is Brooke C, but that band's going places for sure. So can I plug one record before we wrap up? <laughs> yep. I'm going to plug the one I've been plugging for a couple of weeks. I love this album. It's Nervosa from Brazil. Well, one girl's from Brazil, and they've got an all-new lineup. They have uh, Mia Wallace from Abbott. They have uh, Diva Satanica from Spain. And it's a freaking heavy thrash, blackened thrash album, I guess you're going to say. And I think a lot anybody that likes thrash metal or likes the more extreme thing are going to dig this album. And it kind of, you know, it's got the, all the energy, and it's an all-female band. They went through a big lineup change, and just the guitar players left. But... uh Highly recommended on Napalm Records. And yeah, Napalm's got a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Check this out too while you're at it. The brand new Transatlantic featuring Mike Portnoy, Neil Morris, all sorts of other folks. Pete Chiravas from Marillion, Reiner Stoll from the Flower Kings. Nice. Quite good. And there's two versions. There's this, the single disc and the double disc. So one's the regular version with the abridged version. This is the full blown one. So very cool also. So, uh, there you have it, everybody. Another week, another edition of the Hudson Valley Squares. Thanks for joining us live, everybody. We've got about 700 people still watching us right now. At the moment. Uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thanks, everybody. I think we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go to a recorded version next week, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another live show. So stay tuned for that and uh, lots more. So everybody, wave and say goodbye. Sydney, Lynn, Ryan, Steve, Butch, Chris. I am Pete Pardo. Good night, everybody. Good night.